Hey there, I'm Greg and I'm the Small Biz Doer. Today I'm going to be talking to you about producing your very own video all by yourself. A business video that is. And I'm going to divide it up into three steps. And the first step, it is pre-production. Uh, the second step is production and the third, post-production. In regular people terms, that means your script and your setup, then the actual filming, and then lastly, the editing. Oh, I wanted to add this extra thing as well. This video is not going to talk about the different equipment that is needed and whatnot. I'm going to do that in a completely separate video because that will take a, a bit of time to go through. This is just talking about tips, pretending that you already have the equipment on how to make that video a nice looking video. Your script. Now your script is similar to a speech. You have to know what you want to talk about it and you structure it in the same way. And one thing that I learned when doing speeches is to think about my thoughts in bullet point format. Uh, that way you're not trying to memorize a whole whack of lines, deliver at once. That gets kind of hard to do. But if you just remember the certain talking points you want to talk about, it's a lot more natural and easier to give off a presentation. Um, now another tip is to practice in front of the mirror. Practice in front of the mirror, you can see your facial expressions uh, and your hand movements as well. Generally, people don't get the opportunity to see themselves talk. And mirrors, they reflect things in real time. How cool is that? Another option instead of a mirror is actually just filming yourself. Just film yourself and play it back and see how you look and practice that way. Practice before you actually do your real video. And fourthly, if you do need help practicing, there's Toastmasters. Toastmasters is a nonprofit organization where you can give out, go out and give speeches and you meet once a week. Uh, I've done that and obviously I need some more practice at my speeches as well, but uh, essentially Toastmasters is another way just to help you with your script writing process and living whatever you have to say in front of the camera. Now on to the next section. I'm going to talk about six points over here. Lighting, audio, having a steady shot, uh, framing of the picture, B-roll footage, and doing multiple takes. For lighting indoors, I usually find you don't have enough light. I mean, look at me. Does this look like enough light to you? And with these overhead lights, my eye sockets are just big black holes of darkness. So the more light, the better. Uh, but secondly on lighting, a lot of people don't know that lights have different colors. So an incandescent light or a regular orange light, well, it produces orange light. Uh, now you have these new daylight lights that are the color of the same light that you find outside, which is blue. And if you have fluorescent lights, uh, those are more of a green color. So if you're going to light up a set, then make sure you do it with the same color light. Otherwise your skin tones and whatnot are going to look kind of off. Audio. Some people say that's half the picture. If you can't hear what I'm saying, now one thing I always do when I get into a room is I just be very quiet. I listen to the room and just check out the noises. It could be from an open window you hear things, from a dryer, from a fridge, appliances. So try to unplug, turn everything off, and get into a room that is as quiet as possible. Steady shots. Going handheld is a bad idea. Get it on a tripod. And if you don't have a tripod, put it on something stable. Whether it's a chair, a whole bunch of books, a file cabinet, whatever you can to make that camera stable and not move. Now if you do need to move, and you have zoom on your lens, just keep it as wide as possible. The wider your shot, the steadier it's gonna be. See, this is zoomed in. Zoomed out. This is unsteady. Steadier. Framing. I notice this a lot with amateur videos that they just don't frame it properly. And easy rule is the rule of thirds where you divide up the screen well into thirds so there's nine sections and your eyes usually are going to be in the top two-thirds part of the screen uh, if you're looking straight on the camera then you can position the face right in the middle now if you're looking to the left or the right then you can do it like this so 
Okay, so that's about, if I'm looking this way across the camera, you want to have this stuff open and my lines in the middle of that two thirds part. Likewise, if I'm looking this way, you leave that room for somebody to talk. Make sense? B-roll. B-roll is important, but what is B-roll? B-roll is filler shots. It's any shots that is not a talking head, which is me right now. So the reason you want to get B-roll is because it helps you with the edit. So sometimes the B-roll supports whatever you're saying. And sometimes the B-roll just allows the editor to give a break between one point to the next. And another time, B-roll just gives some visual interest and breaks things up. So you're not just always looking at my face. Multiple takes. We're in a digital world now. So trying again and again is essentially free. So take that opportunity. Multiple takes, multiple takes, multiple takes. We're in the digital world, baby. <laughs> multiple takes, multiple takes. We're in the digital world, so go ahead, shoot like crazy. And also remember, you don't have to film everything all in one segment. So if your video is five minutes long, you don't have to deliver that all in five minutes. You can break it up into 20 second chunks, 30 second chunks, even sometimes five or 10 second chunks. Post-production, the editing side of things. The biggest mistake I see with amateur videos when it comes to editing is those special transitions, those special effects when you're going from one scene to the next. They're having a, a star wipe, they're having a circle go in, they're having the things ripple around. Forget all that stuff and go simple and just do a straight cut. That's the sure sign of a professional shot. Just look at a movie and look at all the cuts that go from one scene to the next. They usually don't have any special effects between cuts. It's just one scene to the next. Titling. Titling is something you can use even as B-roll. It's just something to transition from one scene to the next. It can also just break up scenes and help bring some visual interest and emphasize a key point. Another thing with titling is you don't have to get fancy. Just a simple black screen with white text across. That is one of the simplest things you can do, but it always looks pro. Background music. A mistake I often see is people using commercial music, popular music, in their videos. Now, you can actually get away with this. It's, it's illegal, but in YouTube, what they do is they, they recognize people are doing this. And instead of taking the video down, they'll put up an ad against it. But if you're trying to create a video, a promotional video for your business, and you have an ad up against it, it's kind of not the best way. But the, the real legit way to do it, the pro way to do it, is to get royalty-free music. And you can pay for royalty-free music, but you can get Creative Commons music that is free to use. All right, so that's it for my quick tips on how to do a DIY video. Uh, but don't fret, I have some more videos coming your way regarding videos. The first one is going to be on the tools and equipment to use to make a video. So whether you're just gathering whatever you can find and you have a budget of zero dollars or whether you have a budget of five hundred, a thousand or a little bit more dollars, I'll show you what kind of tools you can use to produce that video. Um, secondly, I'm going to be doing a video on uploading and distribution because after you create your masterpiece, you actually want people to see it. And thirdly, it's going to be about maybe reasons why you shouldn't do it yourself in situations you don't want to do it yourself and you want to hire a pro, what you should look for in that professional. All right, till next time.